Hi guys, today we're going to discuss Cambridge IGCSE Physics, paper 6, alternative to practical. The first paper code is 60625-61. It's from May, June 2022. The duration for this paper is 1 hour. Let's scroll all over this question. So you may take a screenshot and pause this video for a while. So this is question 1. Let me zoom out. This is the whole paper for question 1. And this is question 2. So this is question 1. 1A one and 1A one part 2. This is question B. This is question 1C. Next, let's move to question 1D and 1E. Part 1 and Part 2. Next, we go to question 2. This is 2A and 2B. This is still 2B with a table. And next, this is question 2C, Part 1 and 2. And question D. D, Part 1 and D, Part 2. Next, this is question E and F. So this is question 2 E and F. 2 E and F. Next is question number 3, 3A. And this is 3B and 3C. Have you taken the screenshot? And this is 3D part 1, 2. And this is question E, 3E, and this is 3F. Next, let's move to question number 4. And this is still part of question number 4. And then this is question, uh, the slot for the answer. This is uh, 7 marks. So there are only 4 questions for this alternative to practical paper. Now, I will zoom it out in case you want to take a screenshot of the whole page. So this is question 1, question 2, sorry, this is question 1, A, 1, B, C, 1, D, E, and this is question number 2, A, B. And this is question number 2C and D. Next, this is question number 2E and 2F. And followed by question number 3A, B. This is question 3, and this is A, B, and this is C. So this is the whole page. Now this is question D, D, and E, F. Next, let's move on to question 4. And that's it. Now let's get started with the discussion. You may stop this video for a while or self-practice and after we can see the discussion together. Question 1. A student investigates the stretching of a spring. The, the apparatus is shown in figure 1.1. And question A on figure 1.1. Take two readings from the meter rule to determine the unstretched length or LO of the coil part of the spring. Reading 1 and 2, and we want to find the value for LO, unstretched string. So 2 reading will be, if you draw a line from the ruler to the spring, it will be 21.3. The second reading will be 
22.8 and the LO will be 22.8 minus 21.3 which is 1.5 so this is 1.5 cm so this is our answer next it's kind of easy the first question question a part two draw a diagram to show clearly how you should you would use a set square to obtain an accurate reading from the meter ruler so we put the set square in here and this should be parallel with the ruler and the other side pointing to the upper part of the spring and the second one we can draw second square here this side is parallel to the ruler and this one is in line with the lower part lower part of the springs and we take the reading this is 21.3 and this is 22.8 that will be our answer for the diagram next let's move to question 22 uh, 1b the student suspends a load of p equals to 1 newton from the spring he records the new length l1 of the coiled part of the spring now l1 is 2.2 so from 1.5 now it becomes 2.2 Calculate the extension E1 using the equation E1 equals to L1 minus LO. So E1, L will be 2.2 minus the LO, it is 1.5. So 2.2 minus 1.5. It will be 0 0.7. Next, calculate a value for the spring constant k of the spring using the equation k equals to p over e1 so the value of p is 1 newton so we have to substitute p equals to 1 over the e1 is 0 0.7 so we just count this with calculator then we get the answer in p is in newton and then 0 0.7 is in cm so the answer should be newton per cm and we count it calculator so from calculator we get the value of 1 divided by 0 0.7 is 1.42857 so we run off to 1.43 so 1.42857 is our answer from calculator and we round off to 1.43 because this is 8 so we have to add 1 to 2 so 1.43 that will be our answer 1.43 or it is 1.4 newton per cm next question c the student suspends a load of p equals to 5 newton from the spring he records the new length L5 of the coil part of the spring. Now L5 is 6.3 cm. Calculate the extension E5 using the equation E5 equals to L5 minus LO. So E5 will be 6.3 minus 1.5. Now we get the answer is 4.8. Eight. So this is 4.8. Calculate the second value for the spring constant using the equation k equals to p over e5. Give your answer to two significant figure. Two significant figure. So p is 5 now. Get from here and over 4.8. So we got the answer. It is 1.04166666. And then two significant figures, so it is equals to 1.0. So the answer is 1.0 because 4 is less than 5, so we just ignore this. That will be 1.0 Newton per centimeter. Now let's move on. 
Question D state whether your true value of the spin constant k can be considered equal within the limits of experimental accuracy. Explain your answer by referring to your result statement. What we got from the answer for the first case 1.4 and the second case 1.0. So statement 1.4 and 1. 0, they are not equal. That will be our statement. They are not equal because it's different by 0 0.4. So 1 and 1.4 Newton per cm are not equal. The difference between 1 and 1.4 is 0 0.4 if we subtract and the percentage difference of the two values is 40% is quite a lot. So that will be our answer. Next, a uh, student improved the experiment by taking additional sets of readings. Suggest the additional apparatus the student uses. So from the question, we see that the student used uh, one, one Newton, a load. The next is five Newton and get this different value of K, 1.4. The other one is one and then how to improve the experiment is by use additional loads to check the result of the K. So the student can vary 1 Newton, 2 Newton, 3 Newton, 4 Newton, 5 Newton, and so on. So we type our answer. The student can use additional loads. Next question E part 2 suggests how the student uses the additional results. Well, with additional data, the student can take an average of the data. And to get the experimental value of K, the student can take average. Question 2. A student investigates the cooling of water. The apparatus is shown in figure 2.1. Metal can, thermometer, bench. Question A. The thermometer in figure 2.2 shows the room temperature. At the beginning of the experiment, record Theta R for here. So we got here is 20.123. So it's 20, 23. Sorry, this is 25. So this must be one scale is one. So 23. This is 23. Next. The student pours hot water into the metal can. She places the thermometer in the hot water he records she records the temperature theta of the hot water at the time t equals zero and immediately starts a stop clock she measures the water temperature every 30 seconds the readings are shown in table 2.1 complete the column headings in the table 2.1 where there is no column heading this t will be for the second and this will be theta for temperature it will be in degrees Celsius. We type down our answer. So this is the heading. Next question C. The student pours the water from the can into a measuring cylinder and records the volume V of the water is 196 cm cube. C part 1 state two precautions taken when reading the volume of water in a measuring cylinder in order to obtain an accurate result. So this is the correct position of the eyes when reading the scale in this measuring cylinder and it has to be from the bottom part of the meniscus. So we type down our answer. So we view water level perpendicularly and number two read the scale to the bottom of the meniscus. Next, so again, it's not from this top part, but from the bottom of the meniscus. Next question, C part 2. So the student records the volume V to the nearest 1 cm. So the student records to 196. So just why this is appropriate. So 196 is three significant figure. And
measuring cylinder only can be used to measure up to the nearest one centimeter cube. So we just type one reason that will be correct. So this is one mark. Next, we move to question D. Calculate the decrease in temperature of the hot water between times t equals 0 and t equals to 60. 0 and 60, 84 and 75. So 84 minus 75 will be 9. We type down our answer. This is 9 degrees Celsius. So we move on. Calculate the average rate of cooling R1 of the water using the equation R1 equals to delta theta 1 over delta t or time. So delta theta 1 is 9 degree over uh, delta theta is delta t is t to 0 and t equals 60. So 60 minus 0 is 60. So we write down, so it's 9 over 60, it will be 1.5, 0 0.15 if we count the calculator to 0 0.15, the unit will be theta is degrees Celsius over a second. So we type our answer. 0 0.15 degrees Celsius per second. Next question. Calculate the decrease in temperature delta theta 2 of hot water between times t equals 120 second and 180 second. 120 and 180. 70 and 67. So from here, 70 to 67 is decreased by 3. So... 3 degrees Celsius. Calculate the average rate of cooling of water using the equation R2 equals to delta theta 2 over time difference. So 3 degree over time difference is 120 and 180. The difference is 60. So 3 over 60. We got our answer 0 0.05 degrees Celsius per second. A student suggests that the rate of cooling is lower when the temperature of hot water is lower. State and explain whether the result supports this suggestion. So rate is lower when temperature is lower. So let's see if our data from R2 is a uh, From 120 second to 180 second, the R2 is 0 0.05 and the R1 is 0 0.15 is from 0 to 0 to 60 second. So from 0 to 60 second, the rate is 0 0.15. From 120 to 180 is 0 0.05 degree per second. So if we compare the rate R1 and R2, R, R2 is lower than R1 and R2 is uh, at a lower temperature. R1 is at a higher temperature. This is higher temperature. So the rate at lower temperature, which is this part, is 0 0.05, which is lower. So that will be correct. So we type down, yes, at higher temperature, the cooling rate is 0 0.15 degree Celsius per second, while at lower temperature, the cooling rate is 0 0.05 degree Celsius per second. Question F. Well, if you have any question, please feel free to write in the comment section. If you open this video through Susan here YouTube channel, will reply to you with further explanation. Question F. The student states that most of the thermal energy lost by water in the can is by evaporation from the water surface. Another student states that most of the thermal energy lost by water in the can is by conduction. 
through the sides of the can. The students repeat the experiment twice to investigate the two statements. Suggest one suitable addition to the apparatus for each additional experiment. So the first one is by evaporation. We have to one conduct experiment to check whether it is is it by evaporation or second is it by conduction through the sides of the pan. For the evaporation we can put a lead in here so to check whether the heat loss is due to evaporation. When we put the lead, then the rate of uh, heat loss due to evaporation from the surface uh, can be checked or reduced. The second one is from the sides of the can, the student can put an insulator, like a thick covering in here to insulate the metal can to avoid it. Uh, losing heat from the sides of the can. So let's type down our answer. So we put insulator here. So we type down our answer. So we put lead for thermal energy loss by evaporation from the water service. Second, we put insulation for thermal energy loss by conduction through the sides of the can. Next, question 3. A student investigates the resistance of a wire. Figure 3.1 shows the circuit he uses. Sliding contact as resistant wire, voltmeter, ammeter, B, C, and this is the switch and power supply here. The student measures the current and decides what that he wants to use a lower current. So he adds a variable resistor to the circuit to reduce the current. On figure 3.1 mark an X, a suitable position in the circuit for a variable resistant resistor. So to reduce the current, the resistor has to be put in a series with uh, another resistance. So this is the resistant wire. So we can put the X in here. So it will add the total resistance and reduce the current in the circuit so it has to be a uh, series with the resistance emitter and the uh, power supply so you can put it somewhere here next you can put it anywhere in here also as long as it's in series with the resistance wire emitter and power supply next question the student measures the current I in the circuit. Record the current shown in figure 3.2. So figure 3.2, this is 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and then there's one small step before 0 0.4, so it should be 0 0.38, because one small step will be 0 0.02. That's how we do the reading. So in here is 0 0.3 and between 0 0.3 and 0 0.4 there are 5 small steps. There are 5 small steps. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it means these 5 steps values 0 0.1 and 1 small step value 0 0.02. This is how we know this is 0 0.38. This is 0 0.38. So our answer is 0 0.38 amp. Before we move on, to, uh, the reason we put this X in a series with the another resistance is because resistance in series will add up the resistor, total resistance, and we get the have the formula. Resistance of the total is the first resistance and the second resistance. While if we put in parallel, the total resistance will be decreased in a parallel circuit. So uh, we have the formula, this one, the series, we will add up another resistance, will add up the total resistance and reduce the current, while in parallel another resistance will reduce the total uh, resistance. So that's the reason we put the X in series position with the resistance, ammeter, and the 
power supply. Next, the student places the sliding contacts at a distance zero, uh, 85 cm from B. So 85 cm from B will be somewhere here, 85 cm. Next, he measures and records in the table 3.1 the potential difference across the length L of resistance wire BC. Record in table 3.1 the potential difference shown in figure 3.3, .3, so it will be 2, and there's uh, 3 small steps after 2, it means 2.6. 2 2.6, so and we have to put the table, uh, data in the table 3.1, but that will be our answer. Question uh, D part 2, question D now, we are in question D. The student repeats the procedure using L values of 65, 45, 25, and 5, so this is the data. His readings are shown in table 3.1, calculate and record in table 3.1. The resistance of 85 cm of the resistant wire using the equation R equals to V over I. I is the current, V is the voltage, R the resistance. Complete the column heading in the table 3.1. So we'll have to, this one will be, the unit will be volt and ohm. Okay, now we have to calculate the R in here. The current is 0 0.38 amp. The voltage recorded is 2.6 and over 0 0.38 amp from the data. Now we got the answer with calculator. So if we count with calculator, it will be 6.842 and we run up to two decimal places. So 6.84. So this is our answer. Next question plot a graph of resistance. Y axis and again the length L axis. So don't forget to write the unit and start both axes at the origin. This one zero zero. So we plot the graph. How to make a good graph? So we see the range of our data is the R is from zero point five. Three, the maximum is 6.84 so we want to count the range of our data is 6.84 minus 0 0.53 the maximum minus the minimum data if we count with calculator we'll get 6.31 that is our range so 6.31 and we are given the interval is 1 2 3 4 so we just divide it 6.31 divided by 4. So we got approximately 1.5775, so 1.58. So we plan the range or the interval of the y axis. This axis will be about 2 make it easier we may make it two so this will be two four six eight ohm while the data in the horizontal axis is l here the maximum is 85 the minimum is five so the range of data is 85 minus five it is 80 and we have the interval 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 80 divided by 5, we got around 16. So we make run up to 20. So we make this one 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. So this is a good interval of the graph, good scale, as long as it is 70% of the space given then you will be considered as correct uh, don't forget the unit and also uh, correct placing of the dot now let's mark the position l5 so 5 is somewhere in here 
Next is 25, 45, 65, 85. 25 is somewhere here. 45 is somewhere here. And then 65 and 85 is somewhere here. And 85 is somewhere here. Because in the middle is 90, so 85 will be middle way between 80 and 90. The same apply, this is 30, this is um, 50. So this will be the correct position of 5, 25, 45, 65, and 85. So now let's plot the Vertical axis is 0 0.53. So 0 0.53 will be, if this is 2, this is 1. So 1 divided by 5 small set is 0 0.2, so 0 0.2, 0 0.3. And this is 0 0.53, so 0. Point, this is 1, so it will be the middle way between 1 and 0. So we put here, so this is 5 and 0 0.53. Number 2 is 25. And it goes to 2.11. So 25, 2 point. Uh, this is 3. This is 3. So 2.11 will be somewhere here. Number 3 is 45 to 3.68. So 45. This is 50. Then this is 45. So now it has to go to 3.68. So this is 3. And one small step is 3.2, 3.4, 3.6. And this is 3.8. So it will be the middle way in here. Next will be 65 to 5.26, so 65, this is 70, and the middle way between 60 and 70 65, and it has to go to 5.26, 5.26, 5.26, 5 so 5.26 is here, this is 5 and 5.2, 5.4, so between here. Now the next is 85, this is 90, so the middle way will be 85. It goes to 6.84. This is, this is 7. And then it will be somewhere in here. 6.84. So this is our graph. And as long as we move, make a smooth line, we'll get full marks for this one. And correct unit, correct scale for this graph. It is 4 marks. If there's any question, please feel free to write in the comment section in Susan Hero YouTube channel if you watch to Susan Hero YouTube channel. Now use a graph to determine the resistance R50 of the resistance wires. Show clearly of the on the graph how you obtain the necessary information of R50. So we have to see here and goes to the R. It is show that is almost around four. So this is R50 and goes to four. So our answer will be four. 4 ohm. Next, question 4. A student investigate the force required to break different beams made of mixture of sand and cement. A mixture of sand and cement. All the beams have the same cross section. Plan an experiment to investigate the force required to break the beams. Figure 4 1 shows the setup triangular blocks, load, beam, and the bench. The following apparatus is available. A section of beams made from different ratios of sand and cement and of various lengths. Triangular blocks to support the beams, a meter rule, and a selection of loads. You can also use other apparatus or materials that are usually available in the school laboratory. The student takes all the necessary safety precautions. You are not required to write about safety precaution. In your plan, you should explain briefly how to carry out the investigation. You may add to the diagram if it helps your explanation. State the key variables to keep constant. Draw a table or tables with column headings to show how to display your readings. You are not required to enter any readings in a table. Explain how you would use the reading to reach a conclusion. So this is space for us to read all these seven marks so we have to cover up the seven important point. Important ideas is uh, this is instruction an experiment to investigate force to break the beams. We are given 
beams of different ratio or different length. So I choose different ratios of sand. Then what we have to do is we have to take different sets of beams of different ratio of sand and cement. Uh, that will be the independent variable and keep the length the same because that will be control variable and the position of triangular blocks the same and same position of load and to set up uh, the dependent variable is what we measure will be the number of loads before it break will be quite a, so number of loads in uh, rams and there will be already three point and of course we have to uh, use a list six six data and each data is repeated three times take average and discard the anomalies result that will be Four or five points and then display the data in the graph we can show the graph and and first put in the table so there will be up to seven points so we sum up our answer so here's what we want an example of what to write we use six beams with different ratio of sand and cement as independent variables and keep other variables constant such as the same length of beam same position of load same distance between supports so this, this has to be kept the same, same distance between the supports. Next, in each trial, carefully place the load until beam breaks and record the load. Repeat each individual test at least three times and take an average and put the data in the table like this. Composition uh, ratio of cement and sand, we put down the independent variable. And then the maximum load is the data that we observe. So it will be in gram, don't forget to write the heading, and then we can put the data in the graph of composition and cement. So this is the independent variable, uh, load will be the dependent variable, the data that we observe, it will be in uh, vertical axis, and this one will be composition of sand and cement. So after we Plot the graph, we can see the pattern and make a conclusion by comparing data between maximum load and completion of the beam. So that's it. Cover up to seven months. That is uh, the end of our discussion today. So before we end up, uh, we'll scroll over the answer here. This is answer number 1A. This is the answer for 1A part 2. This is answer for 1B and 1c and this is the answer for 1d and 1e part 1 and part 2 this is the answer for question 2a and this is 2b this is 2b and this is the answer for 2c 1 part 1 part 2 and 2d part 1 and part 2 and to be part one, part two, and this is the answer for two E and two F. Next, we move to the answer for question three A. Three A here, the X and three B, and this is three C. This is three D, and then this is uh. 3e and then this will be 3f and let's move to question 4 this is question 4 and this is the answer for uh, question 4 okay end of our discussion today so today we have discussed physics first paper IGSE for grade 10 and This is alternative to practical. The code is this 0625-061. It's from Fast Paper May June 2022. All the physics paper will have these two bulbs 
in my in Susan Hira YouTube channel. So you can check which one is physics paper and which one is other subject. Check link in the description for all other useful videos and as we keep updating our resources every week and don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell so you will be the first to be notified when we release our latest update don't miss that and like and share to anybody who might do this because all subscription is absolutely free so today discussion is conducted by study revision online we cater for all the subject and all this program email us if you are interested to join with us with affordable price well bye bye and see you in the next video and god bless you if there's any question Please feel free to write in the comment section or if you have any idea, input, comment, request or something else. Bye-bye. See you in the next video. God bless you.